If you travel by plane for a long enough distance or between obscure enough cities, you will inevitably have to have a layover. After all, commercial flights are crazy complicated and an airline isn't going to start flying a new route just because you want to go somewhere. So what are these strange stopping points breaking up your journey, and what exactly do you, the presumably tired and confused passenger, have to do when you get there? For those of you who aren't so knowledgeable about flying, the key thing to remember is that airlines are commercial enterprises, and so flying from Portland to Amsterdam may seem vastly more profitable to an airline than, say, Portland to Chengdu. For this reason, you would most likely be routed through an additional airport with planes flying both to Portland and to Chengdu, like, say, Tokyo Narita Airport. So, how do these things work? Well, let's go through a few scenarios. I'll actually go through some scenarios that I've been through myself, mainly so I don't have to do as much research. This will essentially be a beginner's guide to what you need to do in layovers, so forgive me if the information here is a bit… basic at times. But this is stuff everyone should know, so if you don't already know this stuff, I'm here for you. Let's start with simple domestic flights, where you don't have to worry about whether or not you have to go through customs or anything like that. That'll be in the next few scenarios. For this scenario, let's say you're going from Portland to New Orleans. There are no direct flights between Portland and New Orleans, so going there, I was routed through Dallas Love Field Airport. So upon arrival in PDX, simply check in, either online or through printing your boarding passes at the machines that some airports have. Though if you use the latter option, you should get two boarding passes, as you will be flying on two different flights. Since your layover is in Dallas, you will of course need to look for the flight to Dallas, not New Orleans. Upon arrival in Dallas, all you need to do then is look for the gate to your New Orleans flight, though keep in mind gates change, so do look at the departure screens, even if a bit excessively. However, once you're in Dallas, you don't need to recheck your bags, go through security, or any of that stuff. Generally, at least as long as you have that boarding pass. Okay, now let's get international travel involved. Let's use Vancouver to Berlin via Toronto making this a scenario involving flying from country A to country B via another city in country A. So upon arrival at Vancouver YVR Airport, you of course need to check into your flight to Toronto. This will generally be in the domestic flights area, even if your final destination may not actually be in Canada. Simply fly to Toronto, and once you're in Toronto YYZ Airport, then go to the international flights area and find your flight to Berlin. What about the reverse though? What if you're flying internationally and your layover is in the same country as your destination? For this, we will take a flight from London to Portland via Seattle. Now, since London is in the United Kingdom and Portland and Seattle are both in the United States, I of course had to go through US Customs flying this route. This happened in Seattle, not in Portland, simply for the reason that other people exist. Not everyone on the flight from London was continuing on to Portland, or even anywhere at all, and not everyone on the flight to Portland was connecting from another country. Besides, I would eventually have to go through US Customs either way, so we may as well do it when he actually entered the United States. Now, while this is different in other countries, in North American airports, passengers arriving from abroad generally go through immigration, then pick up their check bags and go through customs, which in this case is slightly different from immigration, but that's a story for another time. And then they are effectively kicked out of the sterile area, meaning they must recheck any bags and go through security once again, though some airports may have a special area for arrivals from abroad just to make things a little quicker. Now, let's up the ante a little bit. Let's now say you're flying from one country to another country via a third country. For this example, we'll use Portland to London via Amsterdam. Now, since the Netherlands is in the Schengen area, but both the US and the UK aren't, did I have to go through Dutch Schengen customs when I took this flight? No. Most airports in Europe, as well as in other parts of the world, though not including the US and Canada, operate their international flights separate from their domestic flights. When departing from countries like the US, Canada, or the UK, passengers simply board the plane and… leave the country. However, in areas like the Schengen area, Passengers effectively go through customs a second time to leave the country. This creates a separate area that allows connecting passengers to simply walk through the airport without having to go through customs. Which is very convenient when you only have an hour long layover. However, do be advised that when you're going through UK customs upon arrival in London, this also means that you're basically never in the Netherlands at all. I've made that mistake on my decoration card. This isn't quite the same in North America though. I have yet to have a layover connecting through the US or Canada as a third country, though Vancouver YVR Airport's website has a helpful tool for determining what you need to do in that specific airport. For the most part, US and Canadian airports generally don't have an international zone, like in most European airports, largely because of how departing passengers just board the plane and leave. This means that those going through a North American airport will most likely have to go through customs even if they are continuing on to a destination in another country. One more scenario. Suppose you booked yourself a longer layover, and you've heard of other people stepping outside the airport and taking a day trip in their layover city. 
Is it safe to do this? Is it okay to leave behind the confines of the airport when you're in the middle of your journey? Yes, calm down, you'll be fine. People do this all the time to break up travel days, and yes, I've done this too. Basically, if you want to do this, what's most important is to give yourself a lot of time. There's absolutely nothing stopping you from leaving the airport, but do be warned that you will have to go through security again and get to your gate, so be sure to give yourself enough time for that. Do note that the time you should give yourself varies between cities and airports as well, so be sure of that. But yeah, if you have a long enough layover, ideally an overnight layover, then there's nothing stopping you from going out and breaking up a long travel day with a day trip to a new city. Except for a short enough layover, of course. So that's a very basic guide to a layover. Remember, whether or not you leave the airport or go through customs or just have a short connection and need to run for your plane, do be sure to remember that your biggest priority by the end of the layover is to get onto that second plane. If you got the ticket for your second flight at the first airport and missed the second flight though, airlines do also often have protocols in place just in case it happens. Though maybe not with the cheaper airlines, you kinda get what you pay for in that case. Oh, and a little word of warning, make sure that both your flights go through the same airport. If you have a two-hour connection in Istanbul Airport, make sure your next flight doesn't leave from Istanbul Sabihakukchen Airport, or else you're just not gonna make your flight. You're, you're just not, seriously. Thank you as always for watching this video. If you liked it, please be sure to like the video, and also join us over on the Kanubis Discord server, assuming you haven't already. Also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe so you can learn something new every Sunday.